The exercise file for this lesson contains a macro, a small program written in VBA, which we'll need for one of the examples. If, after opening it, a yellow belt appears, please enable content so that you'll be able to use the macro. The commands for form controls are located under the Developer tab. To make it appear, right-click on the ribbon and select Customize the ribbon. In the Excel Options window, tick the Developer tab and press OK. The Developer tab is displayed at the end of the ribbon. It will also be visible when you open Excel next time. The command that interests us in this lesson is Insert. After clicking on it, a window containing two groups of controls is displayed. Form controls are easier to use, while ActiveX controls give more options and are used by VBA programmers. Both groups contain controls that look the same. For example, the checkbox, so be sure to use the controls from the first group, Form Controls. Example 1. The data for this example can be found in the Form Controls 1 sheet, and the finished example can be found in the Form Controls 2 sheet. The aim is to be able to easily change the currency from Euro to US Dollars for the list of sales representatives without needing to enlarge the table. We'll use the checkbox for this purpose. Click on Insert, then Checkbox. The cursor changes into a small cross. Place the cursor in the place where the checkbox should be. Left click and while holding it, drag the mouse right and down. After releasing the mouse, a checkbox will be created. Type in values in Euro. If necessary, change the size or the location of the field by right clicking and dragging the border or one of the marked points on its edges. Right click on anywhere in the checkbox and select Format Control. Under the Control tab in the cell link, select the cell that you want to show the effect of the checkbox usage. For example, cell G2, and press OK. From the first time that you use the checkbox, false will be shown in cell G2 if it is not ticked, and true will be shown if it is ticked. Now in cell G3, input an if function, which depending on whether G2 is true or false, will take the value of the euro exchange rate, 1.13 or 1. Let's see how it works. Nice, but it still has nothing to do with the sales values. In cell G4, using the if function, add a column header, which depending on cell G2, takes the value of sales euro or sales USD. In cell G5, introduce a formula that divides the sales from column F by cell G3. Then copy this formula down. Using the Format Painter, format column G in the same way as column F. After hiding column F and changing the font color in cells G2 and G3 to white, we get the final version of our table. After changing the checkbox, the appropriate header is shown and according to the selected option, the values will be displayed in US dollars or euro below. Example 2. The data worksheet is called Form Controls 3, and the finished example is in the worksheet Form Controls 4. The combo box is the most commonly used form control in Excel. By using the combo box, we can give the users of our reports the ability to filter the data beyond the possibilities offered by filters or pivot tables. These fields are also much easier to use, which is especially important if we prepare reports for a large group of recipients. Remember that, according to an anonymous survey, the term pivot table brought fear to 91% of Excel users. Our goal in this example is to insert the combo box so that the user can choose a country and the appropriate data will be displayed in the table below. This functionality is used with huge tables of data, in our example, for learning purposes, we have a very short table where the utilization of this solution will not be as visible. Go to the Developer tab, then Insert, Combo Box, and left-click and drag in the place where the combo box should be located to determine the size of the field. After inserting the field, we can adjust the size of it by grabbing it and dragging from any of the circles on its edges. Right-click on the field and select Format Control. Choose the Control tab and enter the following. Input range, which is what needs to be displayed in the selection menu. In this case, the country names in cells G19 to G21. The displayed elements must be set vertically. 
the cell link. The cell in the sheet that you want to display the option selection information in. Select cell D3, but it could also be any other empty cell. Drop down lines. How many items should be displayed? I suggest leaving the value of 8. Press OK. First, click on any cell in the sheet. Now we can make a choice in the combo box. In cell D3, the number 1 has appeared, because we chose the first item from the combo box. Now put a VLOOKUP function into cell C4. We're looking for January's data in the table. In the column number, enter a link to cell D3 plus 1. When the USA is selected, the number 1 appears in cell D3. The data for the USA is in the second of the columns in the data table, so we need to add 1 to get 2. Absolute addressing, or dollar signs, are necessary in order to copy the prepared formula into the cells below. Copy the formula from cell C4 for all of the months. The correct data will be displayed after changing country. Please remember it is always worth testing the reports you create before sending them to your recipients. All that remains to do is to hide the technical rows and column. The source table, a list of countries and a cell link of form control. The benefits of the functionality shown are visible with much more complex reports. Example 3. The data can be found in the worksheet Form Controls 5 and the finished example in the worksheet Form Controls 6. The data table from the previous example has been extended by an additional three columns with some more data for the same countries, except it isn't in dollars, now it's in the local currencies. So we'll add a second combo box to select the type of currency. You can add another combo box or copy the existing one using the usual Ctrl C, Ctrl V shortcuts. Then change the combo box link and input range. We'll also add descriptions and enlarge the combo boxes since the name of the local currency is quite long. When it comes to the formula, let's start by copying it from the previous example. Double click on it. We'll need a longer data source table. The column number needs to be 3 more if a local currency is selected. Let's input an IF function here. If this cell equals 1, then the local currency has been selected, and the function will look for the data 3 more columns to the right. If it's not 1, then add 0, which will change nothing. So if dollars and Canada are selected, the data will be taken from the fourth column of the data table, and the IF function will take the value of 0. Now, changing to the local currencies, the if function takes the value of 3, and we have 3 plus 1 plus 3, so the value will be taken from the 7th column. After hiding the technical cells, the example is complete. This example is developed further with another combo box for quarter selection in my lesson Select Case in the Visual Basic for Applications course. Example 4. The datasheet is called Form Control 7, and the finished example is the sheet form controls 8. In this example, I'm going to show you a method of adding a from to selection to your report, where the lower and upper limits of the range are selected by the user using combo boxes. This functionality makes it easier to view data in quarters, semi-annual periods, or according to a year-to-date basis. Year-to-date means from the beginning of the year to now. The sum of the sales for the selected period needs to be calculated in cell H6. After selecting the first and last month from the combo boxes, that will be placed in cells H2 and H3. Insert the combo box as shown in the second example of this lesson. As the input range, we'll enter the names of the months from the cell range B4 to B15, and use cell I2 as the cell link. The number of lines can be changed to 12 so that all of the months can be seen without needing to scroll. After preparing one combo box, instead of preparing a second one, simply copy the first one. After pasting the second combo box, we get two combo boxes that have the same input range and the same cell link. 
since the cell link is the same, after changing a month in one of the fields, the second field will change in exactly the same way. This may be useful if several sheets present the same data and in each sheet we'd like to be able to change the filtering method that impacts all of the sheets. Our example is definitely simpler. To make the second combo box independent, change its link to cell I3. In column D, I've put the numbers corresponding to the months. In cell E4, enter the if functions. If the number of the month, cell D4, is below the lowest number in the selected period, then the month is not in the selection and zero is input. If it is above the lowest number, then another if function is used. If the number of the month is above the highest month number of the selection, then again zero is input. If it is not, select the sales value in cell C4. Add absolute addressing to cells I2 and I3. It's possible to copy this formula into the remaining cells of column E. We only have to insert the sum into cell H6. We can hide the technical columns. There are also other ways to solve this problem. Example 5. The data is in the sheet called Form Controls 9 and the finished example is in the sheet called Form Controls 10. In this example, the aim is to easily compare the sales results of a selected branch with the sales for the whole of the USA. The table is ready. All you have to do is add the option of choosing a branch and some formulas that calculate the data in the table. The first step is to add a list of branches and assign numbers to them. Where this list is located is not important. We'll use the Remove Duplicates tool to do this. To avoid any questions about the sequence of branches and which is the most important, it's best to put them in alphabetical order. From the Developer tab, select Insert and then click on List Box. Place it to the left of the data table. At this point, the field is empty. Then proceed in exactly the same way as in the previous examples. Format Control. The cell link, select cell D2. Add numbers to the cities. After selecting one of the cities in cell D2, a number is displayed showing which of the cities in our list has been selected. In cell F2, the name of the city we chose should be displayed. Put in a VLOOKUP function there, which will search for the city using the number. The effect of the function will display the city's name in cell F2 after selecting it. We are looking for the number 5 on that list. To calculate the number of customers, use a SUMIF function. First, select the range of cells we need to evaluate, then the condition, and finally, what to add up. Copy the SUMIF function, then adjust it. The count if function works similarly to the sum if function. Sales per rep. Sales per customer. After hiding the table of data and the technical values, we have the final look and functionality of the table. An alternative solution is presented in the sheet called Form Controls 10. Example 6. The data can be found in the sheet called Form Controls 11, and the finished example is located in the sheet called Form Controls 12. An alternative solution is in the sheet named Form Controls 13. In the final example of this lesson, a simple macro will be used. Knowledge of macros will not be required to finish the example, 
but you may still want to watch the first two lessons of my VBA course before proceeding with this lesson. Using the same table and data, we're going to create a list of representatives who work with the largest number of customers, and at the same time, the condition minimum number of customers will be able to be selected by the user of the report. To do this, use a spin button. We'll add it to the sheet and format it. Under the control tab, enter the minimum zero, the maximum 115, and the cell link values in cell D3. From now on, the value of cell D3 will change when you click on one of the arrows of the spin button. In column G, add the condition header with a formula below it, which will subtract the number of clients served by a given representative from the number of clients required by the condition. Copy this formula into the whole column. Select cells G9 and H9 and then turn on the filter. Record a new macro called spin and store it in this workbook. Then press OK. In the filter, select number filters and smaller than. Then enter zero and press OK. Finally, stop recording the macro. Right click on the spin button and select assign macro. Assign the spin macro and press OK. Once the macro is assigned, it will run every time you click on the spin button. Macros only work when they aren't blocked by security rules. To find out more about this, please watch my Visual Basic for Application course, which is also available on the Comprehensive Courses YouTube channel. If you left click and hold one of the spin buttons, the numbers will change more quickly, but the macro will be activated when you release it. It's necessary to record and run the macro because the filter does not refresh automatically after changing the data in the list. I suggest checking how well the macro works by changing the condition of the number of customers. As well as increasing, the lines with appropriate representatives will be hidden. The code of the recording macro, after removing the descriptions and empty lines, should look like this. Modifying the VBA code, or even browsing it, is not necessary to successfully complete this exercise. The number of representatives that meet the condition is calculated using the subtotal function. For the function number 103, it will count the amount of data in the non-hidden rows. You can find a detailed description of the subtotal function in my advanced functions lesson. The percentage of representatives that meet the condition is the result of dividing the data from cell D5 by the total number of representatives. After hiding column G, the exercise can be considered completed. The scroll bar form control shown in my form controls 13 lesson has a very similar effect. The only real difference between the scroll bar and the spin button is the ability to make jumps by the assumed number called the page change. In this example, the page change was set at 10 and occurs after clicking on the scroll bar outside the area of the arrows and the slider here or here. On the scroll bar, you can also go to the assumed value by pulling the slider. By default, you need to press the up arrow on the scroll bar to decrease the number. This seems counterintuitive for most people. This problem has been solved by the formula in cell D3 and selecting cell D2 as a link for the scroll bar. The content of cell D2 has been hidden by using a white font color. Other form controls are less frequently used, and after solving the examples shown in this video, it will be easy for you to understand how they work. You can find more form controls examples in my professional reports lesson. I hope you have learned something new thanks to the work we have put in to make this video. Please now do us a huge favour and recommend this course to your friends so they too can learn how to use Excel properly.